So this is part two of unit A, and in this uh, part of the unit, we're going to look at the structure function of the organelles that we find within an animal cell, and in this case, uh, eukaryotic cell. So let's begin by talking about what is the big picture, what is the enduring understanding for this unit. So in this unit, we're going to look at how organelles function to allow cells to specialize and to do different functions at the same time. So an analogy is in our house we have different rooms where different people can be doing different activities. In one room someone can be having a shower, in another room someone's making dinner, and in another someone's doing the laundry. The cell is the same way. The organelles allow different areas of the cell to do different functions. So in this uh, screencast, we're, we're going to look at the structures and the functions of these organelles. So we need to understand that cells make substances and uh, for our purposes, the two substances that we're going to be talking about cells making are, sorry about that, are, they are going to be either lipids or, and I apologize, they're going to be lipids or proteins. So we're talking about specific substances. Lipids are fats and proteins are the structural molecule of life. The other thing we need to understand is that organelles are going to work as a team. In grade uh, 8 we talked about organelles and we kind of examined their function as discrete and separate from one another. But we really want to start thinking about them as working all together to get one big job done. And the other idea that we're moving towards understanding is that as we move to different parts of the body, the different parts of the body have different functions and so too also the cells in those different parts of the body are going to be different. So some vocabulary organelles and this would be meaning look at the list of organelles, the names of the organelles that we need to know. Uh, the idea of an organelle being membrane bound, remember that eukaryotic cells us animal cells have membrane bound organelles so eukaryotes are defined by that and the other big idea in terms of vocabulary is talking about the chemical reaction and we need to know that that is one of our things that we need to know we need to be able to write out either in word or chemical formula the reaction for cellular respiration. So let's begin. So the first part, baby step in the door in this unit, is to be able to recognize and label accurately the organelle. So just walking it through really quickly, starting in the center, the largest organelle, it, we can see it under the mi light microscope when we do our lab. We'll see the nucleus. Inside the nucleus is not a, we don't call it an organelle. It's really an area, a dark area of the nucleus. And it's the nucleolus. Emphasis, emphasis on the O, so we remember the O goes with the O shape. Sitting right outside the nucleus, we walk into the RER. Uh, the ER that has ribosomes embedded in it. Out from there, the SER, the mitochondria, and this we're looking at an animal cell, so this does not have chloroplasts. And finally, the last one sitting close to the plasma membrane, the Golgi complex, the Golgi bodies or apparatus. All those words mean the same thing. Over here, we would probably have a lysosome. It's going to be round and a little larger than a vesicle, and the red one would then be a vesicle. So just a reminder, we want to be able to label to at least 80% accuracy this or any other cell diagram that we would encounter. So starting with uh, the nucleus, we're going to walk through the function. So as we said, the nucleus is the largest. It contains our genetic material. So genetic material, uh, we need to understand two things. One, our genetic material is made of a type of molecule, DNA, which we'll study in Unit D, and it forms a structure most of the time 
called chromatin. Chromatin is the same thing as chromosomes, just a different structure. Uh, so the nucleus has a membrane that has pores opening so items can move in and items can move out. The nucleolus, that dark area on the inside, synthesizes our RNA. Our RNA is what moves out into the cytoplasm to become our ribosome. So the ribosome, we can find it in two places. Either we can find it uh, embedded in our ER, and here it looks like pepper, right? So this would be ribosome sitting on an ER, or we can find it free floating. Uh, when we look at the ribosome later, uh, on, we're going to see that it's made of two subunits, and this is where proteins are synthesized. But for right now, we're going to focus on this. So free-floating ribosomes are making proteins that stay in the cell, whereas embedded uh, ribosomes are making proteins for export out of the cell. So the overall function of ribosomes, the site of protein synthesis so where proteins are made whichever way you like to say it works uh, and in our minds in our memory we want to tie the ribosome to the nucleolus because that is where our RNA is made and that is what becomes ribosomes uh, moving on to the ER we have two kinds of ER we have smooth and we have rough so we already said uh, our ER if you remember from the last slide, is making proteins for export. The smooth ER, a little bit of a different function, it synthesizes lipids, fats, and it also helps in the detoxification uh, process of toxins. So we would find a lot of SER in our liver, and this is what it looks like under a micrograph. So a real picture of real RER. We want to use our eyes to look for the little dots giving us the clue that this is RER, rough ER. Golgi complex or Golgi bodies, they sit closer to the outside of the cell, so closer to the plasma membrane. They're involved in packaging, in sorting, in modifying items. They also make lysosomes. So they make lysosomes. So packaging, sorting, modifying is their function. And they're not interconnected as we see in our, our ER. Uh, lysosomes, we said, are made by the Golgi body, Golgi apparatus. They contain enzymes. And they are going to break things down. The enzymes within the lysosomes can break down food that is engulfed by a unicellular organism. It can break it down, or it can also break down old uh, or damaged organelles when they no longer have uh, function. Or they can destroy an entire cell and commit suicide. So they're some, sometimes called suicide sacs. Um, Anyways, moving on, mitochondria. This is where cellular respiration occurs. We see two membranes. The inner folded membrane is called the cristae, and this is where cellular respiration occurs. This is where our cells make ATP energy. ATP energy allows us to move things around our body, move molecules around and that would be the micrograph picture looking kind of like a dirty baked potato. Chloroplast only found in plants containing the green pigment chlorophyll and this is where photosynthesis occurs. Photosynthesis, chemical reaction, the reverse of uh, cellular respiration. We want to be certain that we understand that only plants have chloroplasts but plants have chloroplasts and they have mitochondria, whereas animals, us, right, we only have mitochondria. We do not have chloroplasts. Uh, so, ending off, can you draw and label the three types of cells, prokaryotic, plant, and animal? Could you write a paragraph to compare these three types of cells? Could you give the functions for all the organelles? Could you start to or begin to see that cells in different parts of the body are going to have different functions and therefore they're going to have different organelles. Hope that